Talk about a throwback, eh? Shots like this used to take absolutely decades when I made videos last year. But now, thanks to what can only be described as complete genius, I'm able to do it in just a click of a button. Some would agree that it's not an easy dot killer. However, let me talk you through and show you why I think it's just that. Welcome to, quite possibly, the worst chase plane review you've ever seen on YouTube. So, the number one question that I get asked more and more recently is, what are you using to get those awesome views? And the answer is sitting right in front of you. This is Chase Plane. Now, Chase Plane, in a nutshell, is a camera utility on steroids. And this is really the only thing I have to compare it against because there was Opus, but a chocolate teapot was more useful than that. So we'll just stick with something that kind of worked and that I used for a very long time because I had no alternative. Chase Plane is from the guys at FSFX. I think I've said that right. The guys that made things like the immersion packages for the 777 and the Aerosoft A320 and most recently the Dash 8. They also did some general enhancements to the FSX and P3D engine as far as rain and contrails and all that good stuff. Now when this thing was announced I was a little bit skeptical. For years we've always had Easy Dock and no one's really rivaled it and I always wondered why that was and my thought process was maybe it was a little bit too complicated, maybe you had to tap into too many things to modify the core sort of camera structure of, uh, of FSX and P3D, but it turns out my thoughts were wrong and here we are. Now this is an alpha build, this is uh, the moment of version 1 or 0 0.1658. This is alpha experimental and I'll talk about the uh, normal alpha builds versus the experimental builds a little bit later on. But first of all, I just kind of want to run you through the features of this and, and why I'm so excited plus happy that it exists. Now just before they released the initial alpha version that you could buy into, the guys over at FSFX did a sort of preview release live stream. So just before they released it, they went onto YouTube and they live streamed the features of what Chase Plane had to offer. And there was not a single person that I spoke to after that evening that was not amazed by what they'd done with it. So hopefully in this video I'll be able to go through most of the current features and explain what I know from talking with the developers for what we can expect in the not too distant future. So when you open Chase Plane, you probably won't see a screen like this. You'll probably see a bunch of installation prompts and it kind of configures your sim for you. But if you just go through it, it's very intuitive and you'll get to eventually this point. What you probably won't see are these individual camera presets where it'll default you to the presets page when you first open it. Now I'm in the PMDG 747, the new one, the version 3, as you can see. We're just in the cruise over, I think, Canada somewhere. I don't know. It was It's an autosave that I lo loaded in from a while ago. And I figured that it would be probably easier to show you it live in action than just kind of sitting on a runway doing nothing so we'll do some flying with it in a minute and I'll be able to show you exactly what you can do when the aircraft is actually moving but first of all let's just talk about the UI the user interface now if you've used easy dock version 1 and I'm not going to talk about version 2 uh, just yet we'll talk about easy dock version 2 a little bit later on uh, and my thoughts on that towards the end of the video but let's just compare this directly to version 1 because this came out before version 2 of easy dock so the UI the user interface it is absolutely beautiful. They put an incredible amount of thought into this. Everything is so smooth from the clicks to the way the pages change to just the overall feel. It's very intuitive and it's very easy to navigate around. So the first thing you'll see on the left hand side, well first of all if this thing is red, if this icon is red, it means that you are not connected to Flight Simulator. Uh, at the moment I'm connected to uh, P3D version, what was that? 3.4 something, there you go. 1814, whatever it is. 1 
19475, uh, which is the latest hotfix from them at the moment. And uh, if that's green, then it's good. If it's red, it's not. You'll see along the top here, you have uh, the ability to import presets, which at the moment is just for old Easy Dock camera sets. If you have Easy Dock camera sets from Easy Dock version one, then you can import those. And then this is uh, for something a little bit later on. This is still not available yet. And then of course the title, and this is the aircraft, so PMDG 747400. And it says here, if you want to get additional controls, you can hold control. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Over the right hand side here, you have your VAS monitor. So I have almost 500 meg remaining, which is, uh, well, whatever. It's not the greatest, but it'll do. Uh, this is just a pin it. So it's always on top of your, uh, your flight sim. And of course, minimize and close. So moving on to the actual presets page, you have three different columns. Now I'm hope hoping I've paused flight sim, but I'm hoping if I click around, it will change the presets. Yeah, it will. Okay, good. So what you have is you have anything that is inside the cockpit. So anything that's on board the aircraft you have in this column, and then anything that's outside, i.e. the left wing, the right wing, or the follow camera, as I call it, in the outside column, and then the static column, which is something that I've not set up yet, but if you click it, it'll just put you behind the aircraft in a sort of static position. Uh, there's also a cool feature with the static position, which I'll show you a little bit further down the line. But uh, for now, we'll just focus on the onboard and the outside columns. So let's go back to the cockpit. When you first open up Chase Plane, you'll see that there is nothing in either of these columns. And to add a camera, it's really simple. You can either import presets if you've already used Easy Dock and you have your own presets, or you can create a new preset. And you press the plus arrow, and then you get this nice little UI, and then you can name your uh, your preset. So for example, we'll just call this Cockpit 2. Actually, no, let's be, let's be original. We'll say Overhead. Why not? And this is... Um, going to the 747-400. It's not going to have any of these features, which is perfect. You don't want wind turbulence and you don't want engine blast turbulence. I'll show you what that is in a minute. Uh, and it's created by me. And of course you can press the uh, the tick and that will add it to your list. Now, if you look at the cockpit versus the overhead, they're in the same place because it takes your last position when you create a new camera, uh, which is beautiful. It doesn't send you back to anywhere. But if you noticed underneath the, the cockpit preset, you'll see that it says D1 and then Joy B4. Now that just stands for the keyboard assignment, which is on the left and the joystick assignment, which is on the right. I have my uh, X56 set up so that on the throttle, the uh, the two small buttons behind the throttle where your sort of index finger is, is what I control the, either the left wing view or the cockpit. So if I'm flying off autopilot, I can uh, still flick around the views and I don't have to mess around with pressing the keyboard. I have my cockpit view also bound to the number one on my keyboard as well and uh, seven, eight and nine for all of those. So for example, if I press seven, it will go to the wing view. If I press eight, it'll go to the right wing view and then nine, it will go to the follow. And that's exactly what you needed to do. So coming back to the UI, um, if we want to make an overhead uh, view, let's make sure to toggle it on top. We'll move it over here. We'll make sure this is selected and then we can go into here into the sim using the arrow keys and I'll show you that's the next bit along in the list of things to show you uh, how to set it up exactly like easy dock that's in preferences but for now we use arrow keys and if you hold middle mouse you can move the camera all the way up like this towards uh, the overhead panel find where you want to be so maybe a bit further towards the landing lights and a bit further up towards the top so you can see everything like this. And then when you're there, you can either go to the camera tab and then press the tick to save it, or they've included this genius system where if you middle mouse hold the flight simulator window like this, you get this beautiful little menu. And this is, you can do a bunch of things from this actually. You can global disable it, you can open the UI, you can reset the camera position, you can create a new preset from it itself. You can update the current one, you can go into cinema, uh, cinematic mode. And then this is for the community feature which is not available yet and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So, you uh, for, for this instance we want to update the preset on the overhead panel. So we'll just scroll to update, we'll click it, and then you'll notice that the camera icon or the camera uh, tab even, the little icon, the little bullet icon disappears. And that means now that we have an overhead preset which is saved. And if we go back to cockpit, there's cockpit and there's overhead. It's it's similar to how Easy Dock used to work, although about 950 million times more intuitive. Now, if you want to bind this overhead to a key or a joystick, just with it selected, you can see it's a little bit of a darker color when it's selected. 
selected, just hold your control key and then you will get two blanks underneath it. So this will be uh, your keyboard command and this will be your joystick command. So this left hand side, you click on it and then you'll say, it'll say press the key you want to assign the overhead to. I'll use number two, so I'll press number two on my keyboard, press confirm. I ain't gonna assign a joystick access to it or a button because I don't have anything that I couldn't assign to it. But if you wanted to do that, it's just the same. Press the button you wanna assign and, and away you go. So now if I'm in, in number one and then I press number two, when I'm in the sim, it'll go two, one, two, one, you get the point. I'm probably going to give someone epilepsy by doing that, so I do apologize. Uh, and that's the way you do all of the presets. So if you want to go to the, the wing view, you can. we could create another wing view. I'll just run it through uh, really quickly with you. So let's go left wing view 2, and then we'll assign that to what do we have? We have number 6 free. So I could go like this, and I could find a place on the wing that I really wanted to use. So let's say over the flaps or something like that move that over there then if i hold middle mouse button and then just go update preset and then if i want to flick between those views i can go there's left wing there's right wing and then let's go back to the view we created and then it's that simple so that's the preset tab in a nutshell very simplistic very intuitive and i'm going to use the word intuitive a hell of a lot in this video because it really is intuitive there is nothing more intuitive than this as far as cameras go or camera utilities if you will next on the list is the camera tab now, I've not really played around with this as much as I, I should. I use this uh, as a replacement for EasyDock. There are some features of this which are just far too overpowered for me. I don't need them. But there are a lot of features which I know a bunch of you will find useful. So I'll kind of try and explain as best I can from what I know. So these are relative to the presets. So if I change this and then go to camera, you see that this changes. Um, it's all to do with how you want the camera to react uh, in its element itself. So for example, if you didn't, have the ability to change the preset by using arrow keys like this you could go to the camera tab and then you could move these sliders up and down or you can set a numerical value you can set your position wherever you want to be you can tilt you can roll and it's very trippy if you just hold that i'm sure a bunch of you are going to really like that that even screws with my head but there you go um, and, and you can zoom in as well and zoom out. So that's what that does. Uh, you also have different uh, icons here, which will take you to the relative preset column. So this will go to outside, this will go to static. It's just the same concept. You can cycle through them and, uh, and change them as you will. Now, turbulence here is uh, something that's a little bit different that I've not seen in any other camera add-on before. In EasyDoc, you had, uh, I think, three circles that you could change, DRM or RDM or something like that. I can't remember. It, it was very complicated. Uh, but this makes it very simple. So in the, in, the co in the cockpit itself, you see that all of the presets have already been set for you for what they believe is the most realistic. And you can change these if you like, for example, example, uh, if you wanted to add some more human factor, you could zoom this all the way up. In fact, if we unpause Flight Simulator in the background, you'll see that the little green, um, I want to say slider progress thing at the bottom shows you exactly what's going on real time. So if you wanted to up the breathing of the pilot, you can see if you put that right to the top, the aircraft kind of sways in and out as if you're breathing in and out. Um, this is anticipation, you could whack that up, but I don't think it'll do anything in the air. But the breathing is something that it will definitely do. Other things you can do is if we turn up acceleration, you can see it bounces a lot. Same with the engines and stuff like that. And you can, you can have it going crazy if you want, but I kind of keep it toned down. Um, same works for outside. So if you go to the wing view and you can up the wind, uh, and up, if I just up everything and you'll see that if we hit something, which we probably won't now, I'm trying to explain stuff to you, uh, that the actual camera view itself will move depending on what you're doing. Um, it's very shaky. And then of course the same for the static camera. The plane's now flown off into the distance, but you can change all of these if you like. Uh, going back to the effects, something which is pretty cool. I, I noticed in the uh, in the setup of the cameras. So remember we press this. It says engine blast turbulence is disabled. This is something that they've added, which is pretty weird. And at first it caught me by surprise, but then afterwards I realized why it does it, and it's pretty cool. Chase plane itself essentially mimics everything that the aircraft feels and goes through. We're not talking emotions here. We're talking about physics. And so if you put the camera behind one of these beautiful RB211 engines, you are going to get destroyed. Look at that. <laughs> that is the wake of the engines. It's not even wake, is it? It's actual thrust being poured into you at a ridiculous rate.
Uh, you can turn that off if you want, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it does get me now and again when I'm panning around and trying to make views, and all of a sudden it starts shaking and I wonder what's going on. But that happens to, to any engine uh, with any aircraft, it, it, and as well, it depends on the amount of power that's coming out the back, depends on how much it shakes. It's all dynamic, nothing is static. Um, so we've kind of made our way from inside to outside to show you that. And uh, while we're on the outside, I guess I can show you other things. So when we first started this video, do you remember me showing you the, the chase plane panoramic? The chase plane panoramic, also known as cinematic mode, is easily accessed through the middle mouse button and then hit cinematic mode. And you'll see that if you head into preferences and then camera, you can change the update time in which it changes to different views and also the motion. You can also auto enable it above flight level 180 after 20 minutes if you want. So for example, when I'm doing long calls on Twitch, after a while people get bored of looking at the flight deck and if I'm not around, after 20 minutes that will change automatically to cinematic mode. Anyway, we kind of jumped ahead of the game a little bit. So that's all of the presets. That's how you deal with the presets. And uh, that's how you deal with the control section and the turbulence section of the camera tab. Uh, the advanced, again, is pretty self-explanatory, very intuitive. You can change a few things here. Let me just move it back to the middle so you can see. If you have track IR, you can put that on. I don't. Uh, sticky mouse look, if you uh, want to just use it with your mouse, you can do that. Uh, scroll zoom is pretty useful. So if you uh, hold the middle mouse in, you can scroll. And then you can also skip when cycling presets if you want. I have that turned off. Uh, you can also change the transition curve which is pretty cool they give you a bunch of different ones uh, and that is to do with if you go from camera to camera like so how the transition affects switching cameras you can have a play with that i'm not going to show you everything to do with that so just underneath the transition stuff there's stuff for stabilization and there's also an option for framing overlay if you'd like to use that again these don't really need much explanation you just need to uh get on with it and, and look at it yourself. Okay, so moving across, down at the bottom of the advanced tab, you see that there are various icons and there's also a global tab. Now this is to do with the acceleration of your devices. So for example, if I wanted to change my mouse acceleration, I can put this right up and then you'll see that when I zoom around, everything is very fast and you can't really keep up with it. And you can do that for everything. So if you want to um, if you want to change your keyboard sensitivity or, or your mouse sensitivity, or you want to uh, change, for example, if you use an Xbox controller, God forbid, then you can do that. I say God forbid with Xbox controllers, they're actually incredibly useful if you're trying to do recorded footage and you don't want to interfere with the controls, especially if you have like a yoke or something like that that doesn't have a hat switch, uh, or maybe a joystick that doesn't have a hat switch as well, or doesn't have enough hat switches for you to be able to pan around. It's pretty nice that they've allowed you to have a, a third input there. So that pretty much completes the advanced section of uh, of the camera tab. There isn't really much else to show you on here. Again, incredibly intuitive and it's really that simple. Next on the list is the aircraft tab, but that's blanked out. That's one of the features that's coming in the not too distant future. And same for the community tab. I've seen a preview of this community tab that they did on a video about three or four days ago. And basically it's going to allow me to share my presets with everybody. And it's also going to allow everybody else to share their presets with everybody else. Think of it as like a cloud for presets. So you'll be able to go on there, you'll be able to search my name or search your friend's name or whatever, and then you can import Port your presets into your preset tab and that will solve a lot of confusion in regards to people constantly asking oh can I have your presets where can I get your presets at the moment there is no way to export them as far as I'm aware so until that community feature comes we're kind of at the mercy of making our own all right so preferences is the next tab and I don't know why it's on camera let's put it back to general so this is where I was talking about the experimental version before they keep throwing out experimental versions of the alpha. It's almost like an, a beta version of the alpha. It's one that they're not quite comfortable with calling alpha yet. And it's got some cool new features in it. You can disable advanced features. It's up to you. Uh, this is to do with smooth zoom, static cameras, camera mode synchron synchronization even, etc, etc. You can send them statistics if you want. Uh, you can toggle on the VAS and stuff like that. I guess this all needs a restart if you want to do that. Uh, all of the settings to do with the interface is, is there. Um, and also you can deal with CPU assignments, which is really cool. Uh, at the moment, mine's set to dynamically use the best 
possible CPU. So the one that it has the lowest load on it, uh, you saw it then flick from two to one and now back to zero. The one that has the lowest load on it, it will then jump to that, which is awesome. It means that you'll never get any problems with performance as a result of Chase Plane. Down at the bottom, you can auto launch it with your SIM. So I'm using P3D version three. And of course the last one is reserved and we all know what that's for. And then if you get in a bit of a mess and you need to reset everything, then here's the buttons to do that. And also if you need to generate stuff to send to them for some support issues, uh, you can do that here. Moving across to the camera tab, well, it's again, very self-explanatory. You can do whatever you need to do here I was talking about the cinematic mode before, you can change that to your liking. Uh, you can also have it if you like mouse, a middle mouse button to change the views like I do here or, or change or pan around the views even. Uh, and if you don't like that, then you can disable it. Okay, so next from camera is the control assignment list. Now this is the most controversial I think because this is where you really do get a ton of configurability, is that a word? I wanna say it is, but I keep it very, very simple. You can go through any of these, it's just the same as setting a key assignment for the preset. So you would click on something, you get the little UI and then you do it. Um, if you wanna keep it the same as EasyDoc, which is uh, which is what I do, then you do the following. So forward is up arrow, backwards is down arrow, left is left, right is right, you get the point. And then I use the, the hat switch on my joystick to pan around. I also have equal and minus for default zoom in and out and then mouse look hold is space if you use the default view system in p3d or fsx you'll know that if you want to move around in the vc or pretty much anywhere you just hold space and move your mouse and it follows around it's exactly the same concept um it's just it, it's it's fantastic it gives you the option to be able to do what you want to do with it and uh, when this first came out this um this control assignments page wasn't the best but they did put a huge amount of effort into it and now it's beautiful and uh, and you can pretty much do exactly what you need to do with it. Okay, so that covers all of the current features that are available in Chase Plane at the moment. Now, there is a roadmap on the, I think it's on the Avsim forum, uh, their own Avsim forum, they run the support forum through Avsim, uh, of what is going to happen in the future, past alpha and on to I assume beta and then public release and uh, and of course their way forward. If you wanna know what's going on with the alphas within the client, then you can click on known issues here and they have a change log of everything they've done all the way back to when it was released in uh, in December of, uh, of last year. So that's pretty much that. Now I'm gonna do some flying with it. I'm gonna land this thing into JFK. I'll show you what the actual effects are like on the aircraft as you are doing things like taxiing and touching down and braking and stuff like that. And then that is pretty much everything that we need to talk about. Okay, so now to show you Chase Plane in its practical form instead of you just seeing a static screen with me walking through the UI. We're sat here in the PMDG 747 on the ground at San Diego, the only stand here that apparently fits this aircraft, which is uh, stand 20. And uh, we're not going to do any sort of like long haul flying. I'm just going to push this back then taxi it out to the runway. We might take off and do a, a circuit or so. But I just want you to see how Chase Plane interacts with the aircraft physics and the environmental factors that are pushed onto the aircraft. So, firstly, if you're an EasyDoc user, most of this smooth panning will come as second nature to you. But as you saw in the previous bit of the video, it's very, very easy to set up. So to move around, I'm just using my arrow keys. I'm also holding my middle mouse button and then moving that as well at the same time. So it gives you kind of like a walk around effect. They don't have a walk around just yet, as in like an actual head movement that you can do. But I suppose you could set a uh, preset of a walk around and then adjust the environmental factors to make it look like you're actually walking around. Of course, we still have the same presets. We want to look at the left wing, it's number seven. If we want to look at the right wing, it's number eight. And of course, if we want to go up front, it's number nine. But anyway, we'll jump back to the cockpit, and now we're in the cockpit or the flight deck, I think that's the saying that you're allowed to use these days. Um, you'll see that the, the movement inside the flight deck is just as fluid as the outside, no real issue at all. I don't have any other presets set up in the flight deck, I just have the one view, because I kind of like moving around myself. I don't like hitting buttons to find different views. If I want something on the overhead, I'll look up, and this is a sort of view that you would see if you were a captain 
you know, instead of just pressing a button and ending up in this sort of orientation here, because that's not realistic. If you were a captain and you wanted to turn on, for example, I don't know, the strobe light or something, you'd look to the right and you'd reach over and then, of course, you'd hit the strobe light. So, that is the way I set it up in the cockpit or the flight deck. I'm not going to program any of this properly, I just want to show you, again, this is just about chase play, not about the aircraft, but as we're sat in this stationary position, if you look very, very carefully, you can see that the camera is moving a little bit forwards and backwards. And this is simulating the breathing of the person behind the camera. The easiest way I can probably show you it is if you take a focal point, uh, so something like, I don't know, let's see if we can get the yoke in line with the FMC here. If you look very, very closely, it's sort of swaying in and out of the F. It's very, very subtle because that's how I like it. You can turn it up if you want, that's completely up to you. But I find if it's too high, then it's a bit ridiculous and it gets me a bit motion sick. So that's what you've got going for it when it's in a stationary position. Okay, so we've already pushed back, we've started the engines. I'm just going to put some flaps down for takeoff and we're uh, taxiing up to runway 27 here at San Diego. So as we're taxiing along to the runway you'll see that the aircraft is making these minor head bobs and it's not actually the aircraft, it's the camera views. The camera itself is making these minor adjustments to compensate for what the aircraft is feeling. So in this case this would be going over bumps on the taxiway lines or the taxiway itself or even just the inertia of accelerating and braking as well. If I was to now at 17 knots across the ground, if I was to idle the power and then hit the brakes pretty hard, you see it jumps forward. And that's exactly what you would get if you were sat in the seat of a plane and decided to, uh, to slam the brakes on. Same for if you're accelerating, but we'll show you that on the takeoff roll. It's a little bit less noticeable when you're just taxiing, but when you go to put the power in, it definitely shows when you're ready to take off. Now let's go to the wing view. The wing view is exactly the same concept. You can see everything shaking around. And it's the same if I slam the brakes on. It's a little bit less noticeable in the wing view, but you still get the inertia of the plane slowing and accelerating. Okay, so we're just approaching runway 27. I've already got all the lights. We'll uh, taxi onto the runway. We're going a little bit too fast, but this is a good opportunity to show you the braking mechanism. If I start to tap the brakes very lightly, you'll see that the the aircraft responds, or the camera responds, and then hopefully we can nail this lineup. But it really doesn't matter if we don't. I'm not a connoisseur of the 747 yet, and these little stutters that I get with it really bug me, but apparently it's a common problem. Okay, so here we are, runway 27. I have nothing set, only flaps. So we can bring the power in, put it to about 65, 70%, and you'll see the camera then start to react to the acceleration. We'll put Toga in, so that's gonna give us full power. And you'll notice everything gets a little bit more abrupt. Now, of course, you can turn these effects down or up as you please. I've kind of over-exaggerated them a little bit just for the video so you can see what they're doing. There's a hundred knots. And we'll rotate at about 150-ish, 155. There's 140, 150. We'll start to bring the nose back. And you notice as soon as the main wheels lift off the ground, everything gets a bit smoother, including the stutters, apparently. Now, if we look on the wing view, you'll see that it's also gone smoother over here. The camera is still moving, but very, very slightly in comparison. Now, if we took off into some severe weather or severe turbulence, that would reflect in the camera as well. Okay, so, if we were to make a sharp left-hand turn or right-hand turn, this is normally something you wouldn't do in a 747. Just watch how the camera reacts. Okay, so if I throw the ailerons all the way to the left, you'll see that the camera picks up the inertia of the roll and tries to follow it. Same if I decided to correct it all the way to the right. Brings it 
some flaps in before we break things. Okay, so here we are, just uh, approaching runway 09 at San Diego. Again, I have nothing set, I'm just kind of winging it, no pun intended. But we, uh, we're purposely going to land heavy and fast. Because I think if I try to land smooth, you're not really going to see very much. But if we land heavy and fast, hopefully without breaking things, you'll really get a feel for the effects of the chase plane. So we're doing 160 odd knots. We've got 170 tons of fuel on board. So we're pretty we're pretty much over max landing weight, but that's half the fun. So what we'll do is we'll kind of float it a bit and then slam it. Which is the majority of my landings nowadays. So we'll idle the power now. 30, 20, and then just 10. let the main gear. There we go. There we go. Nice. You can hear all of the That's what happens when you hit the ground too hard, but you can see how Chase Plane reacts, and it reacts very well. Sometimes there are glitches in the scenery or with the mesh that cause the aircraft itself to kind of flatten itself before you get anywhere near to, uh, to the ground, but um, that's just the way it is. There's nothing really I can do about that. So you can put all the brakes on. there we go, we stopped at the end of the runway. So, to conclude this review of Chase Plane, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what you like about it, what you don't like about it, if you actually have the product or if you're thinking about having the product, what made you get it or what's keeping you away from getting it, anything you have to contribute will be appreciated. From my point of view, I absolutely love Chase Plane. It has completely replaced any camera add-on that I've had previously. I'm priced at just $40 for something as in-depth as this, and it's not even out of alpha yet, is pretty damn impressive. It works out of the box, it's compatible with FSX, FSX Steam Edition, it's compatible with P3D. You don't have to do any sort of crazy Windows hacks to get it to work, it just works. It has ongoing support and continuous updates which I might add are done seamlessly through the client, and it's pretty much everything you could want in a camera utility, and then some. So, just quickly before I finish, I mentioned earlier on in the video that Easy Dock version 2 was something I wouldn't be comparing Chase Plane against, and there is very good reason for that. I don't actually own Easy Dock version 2. I never bought it. I had version 1, then Chase Plane released, and very soon after, and I mean very soon after, Easy Dock version 2 was released. Now, this is just going off what I've seen and what I've read and from people I've spoke to, but apparently version 2 of Easy Dock is not very good at all. And it still has the same problems and the same quirks as version 1, albeit with a new UI and some other, I want to say cool features, but according to what people have told me, they're really not that cool. Someone mentioned something about it actually modifying the flight dynamics to be able to give you the realistic effects, which is something Chase Plane does not do. And if that is the case, that's bad, because if it's messing with the flight dynamics of aircraft which proclaim to have real flight dynamics, then that's an issue. And as well, Easy Dock has always left a bitter taste in my mouth. They released the product version 1 and then just went quiet with lack of support for any new versions of Windows or any new versions of the platforms, i.e. FSX, FSX Steam Edition and Prepared. We kind of had to, as a community, figure it out for ourselves. However, each to their own, maybe one day I'll grab myself a copy of version 2 and I'll review that as well. But to be honest, I don't see the need. I found my go-to camera tool and it works for me perfectly. So as I said before, I'd love to hear your, your feedback and your comments about not just this video, but Chase Plane in general, if you have it or you're planning on getting it. And maybe perhaps some ideas of what you'd like to see from it in the not too distant future. Okay, I think that wraps everything up from myself. I hope you enjoyed this new style of video. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until the next time, I bid you all farewell.